Welcome to this Insectacute ATEX awareness training video. In this video, we will look first at the ATEX environment itself, what it is, and why you need to be aware of it. And secondly, how to service the Insectacute EX55 ATEX rated electric fly killing unit. The term ATEX comes from the French atmosphere explosible and deals with explosive atmospheres in the workplace that can be caused by flammable gases, mists, vapours, or by combustible dust. Typically, a sign like this would indicate that you are entering an ATEX controlled area. The purpose is to protect workers and installations from the risk of explosions caused by explosive atmospheres. ATEX is the name commonly given to two European directives for controlling explosive atmospheres. There are two European directives. The first directive, 949EC, also known as ATEX 95 or the ATEX Equipment Directive, concerns equipment and protective systems for use in potentially explosive atmospheres. This would include appliances and tools both electrical or mechanical. The second directive, 9992EC, also known as ATEX 137 or the ATEX Workplace Directive, deals with precautions to be taken in workplaces where explosive atmospheres might be present due to flammable dust, vapours or gases, or mixtures of these. These precautions might include, for instance, a requirement for anti-static clothing. Potential explosive environments where you might find ATEX controlled areas can be found in a wide selection of industrial sectors. These could include oil and gas drilling, both surface and underground mining, flour mills and other sectors containing dust or powders. Some other examples include chemical manufacturing, distilleries and food manufacturing. ATEX classifies the potential explosive working environment and equipment to be used in these areas into groups and zones for the working environment and categories for equipment. If the potential explosive environment is from gas, vapour or mist, the class of the ATEX zone will be identified either as Zone 0, Zone 1 or Zone 2. Whether the areas are classed as 0, 1 or 2 depends on the likelihood that the explosive environment will occur and if it does occur, the frequency of its occurrence. For example, in the case of Zone 2, it is considered unlikely that the explosive environment would occur in normal operation and if it did, it would only be for a short period. If the potential explosive environment is from the risk of a cloud of combustible dust in the air, the class of the ATEX zone would be identified either as Zone 20, Zone 21 or Zone 22. Again, the classification of 20, 21 or 22 would depend upon the considered likelihood that the explosive environment will occur and the frequency of its occurrence. In the case of Zone 21, it is considered likely that the explosive environment would occur in normal operation but only occasionally. Equipment intended for use in ATEX environments is split into two groups and five categories depending upon the level of protection required. Group 1 equipment is intended for use in underground parts of mines and surface installations of mines liable to be endangered by fire damp and or combustible dust. Within Group 1 there are two equipment categories. Category M1 where the equipment must be able to operate safely even in the presence of explosive atmospheres. Category M2, in this category, the equipment needs to be de-energised in the presence of explosive atmospheres. Group 2 ATEX equipment is intended for use in any other ATEX rated environment other than specified in Group 1. Group 2 equipment is split into three categories. Category 1, suitable for Zones 0 and 20. Category 2, suitable for Zones 1 and 21. Category 3, suitable for Zones 2 and 22. If you're a subcontractor and you are planning to visit a site to work in an ATEX rated zone, there are a few points that you should consider. 
Contact the site manager to explain your need to enter the ATEC zone and ask them to make you aware of any specific requirements or precautions. If your purpose for the visit is to service the EX55 fly killing unit, you must have the power to the unit switched off before you start the service and you may need assistance from the site manager to switch off the power. You may be required to wear protective clothing. This may take the form of anti-static boots, for instance, but check with the site manager before you arrange your visit. If you plan to take any tools or equipment into the ATEX area, check with the site manager that they are permitted in the controlled ATEX zone. Finally, if you have any doubts, ask. The Pelsis Insecticutor range of electric fly killers includes the EX55, which is the Category 3 ATEX rated unit. The EX55 unit is suitable for Zone 2, where a gas, vapour or mist is not likely to occur in normal operations, but if it did, will persist for a short period only. And Zone 22, where a cloud of combustible dust is not likely to occur in normal operations, but would persist for only a short period if it did. The EX55 falls into Group 2, Category 3 in the ATEX equipment chart. The features of the EX55 fly killing unit include the light fitting body and clear front cover, both manufactured from shatter resistant plastic. The clear front cover is fully sealed and has six hand release clips that hold the front cover to the light body. The unit has a 304 grade stainless steel frame. Which holds two large glue boards. Note that the EX55 unit has an electronic ballast and so does not require starters. The EX55 has a built-in mounting bracket for simple installation as seen on the reverse. To carry out a full service on the EX55 ATEX unit you will need Two replacement shatterproof tubes, part code TVX18 24S. Two replacement glue boards, part code 6139. Some cloth to wipe off any dirt or debris and hand wipes to remove any contamination on the seal. No tools should be required. Warning. Check that the power to the unit has been switched off. Note that the unit will not have a plug, it will be hardwired into the electrical main supply. Ask the site manager to switch off the power to the unit before you start the servicing. Once you are happy that the electrical power to the unit has been switched off, you can start the service. First, so that you can clean the unit effectively, the old glue boards need to be removed. They simply slide out of the holding frame. Next, remove any dirt or debris from the outside of the unit. This will make it easier for you to inspect for any damage and help prevent any contamination from getting inside the unit when the front cover is removed. Check that the light fitting and front cover are not damaged. If you find any damage, like cracks or chips in the light fitting or the front cover, the unit will need to be replaced. Do not continue with the service. Do not reconnect the power. You will need to remove the front cover to change the UV tubes. To do this, you will need to undo the six clips that hold the front cover in place. The clips are easily unhooked with one hand whilst holding the front cover with the other hand. When the clips are undone, you can pull the front cover away, being careful not to dislodge or damage the seal. 
Once the cover is off, place it down being careful not to damage the seal face. To remove the old tubes, simply rotate them by 90 degrees and slide them out of the tube holders. Fit the new tubes by sliding into the tube holders and rotating 90 degrees until they click securely into place. Check that the seal is not damaged and is seated correctly. Also make sure that the seal is not contaminated with any dirt or dust. Remove any contamination with a hand wipe. Check the seal face of the front cover to make sure that it is not damaged or contaminated with dust or dirt. If necessary, wipe down the inside of the front cover to remove any dirt. To replace the front cover, carefully position it onto the seal and reattach the six clips, making sure that the clips grasp into the rebate around the front cover. Fit the new glue boards by sliding them into the frame. Check you are happy that the front cover is fitted securely and then carefully remove the protective paper from each glue board. Switch on the electrical power and check that the UV lamps light up. If they don't light, switch off the power, remove the front cover and check the lamps are fitted correctly. That concludes our training video on ATEX Awareness.